So there are six variables that make up everything in our known universe. For example, if we were to look at this rock, we know this rock has a mass. We also know this rock has a certain length. This rock has a temperature, it's radiating heat. And we also know this rock has charge in the form of negatively charged electrons and positively charged protons. And it also has an luminosity. So again, there are these six variables that can describe and make up everything in our known universe, which is, which is pretty cool. However, there's a problem. For example, maybe in the United States, we would say this rock has a length of 13 feet. However, over in Europe, they would say, no, no, this rock has a length of 3.9 meters. And yeah, these both represent physically the exact same thing. They both represent the length of this specific rock. However, in the United States, we use units of feet, while in Europe, they like to use units of meters. So this is bad. This is confusing. We want the world to be consistent when we talk about length. So therefore, the world has decided to use a convention. The world has cooperated and decided whenever we're talking about length, we're going to use units of meters. That's the unit of length the world has decided to use. And the same thing with these other units. For example, mass, whenever we're dealing with mass, the world has, has decided we'll use units of kilograms. Whenever we're dealing with time, we'll use units of second. Temperature, we'll use Kelvin. Charge, we'll use Coulomb, and etc. So these units that the world has decided to use are called the SI units, the International System of Units. The world has cooperated. So whenever we talk about these variables, we use these specific units so the whole world can be consistent. However, there are different types of these variables. For example, there are different types of meters. So what do I mean? So again, let's say this length represents one meter. However, we can also have millimeters and micrometers and nanometers and kilometers and etc. So here is a little key to show these all represent the exact same length. One meter is the exact same length as 1000 millimeters, which is the exact same length as a million micrometers, which is the exact same length as this, which is the exact same length of this and etc. So all these physically represent the same length. So again, these are all equal. So again, if we have a million micrometers, so again, if we had a million of these micrometers, it would be the exact same length as one meter. Because again, all these represent physically the same thing. And again, the same thing with grams. One gram is the same as a thousand milligrams, which is the same thing as 0 0.001 kilograms. These all represent the same thing. But again, if we're dealing with something very small, we'll like to use nanograms. If we're dealing with something very large, we would like to use gigagrams and, and etc. And the same thing with time. These all represent the same thing. But these are really ugly numbers. There's so many zeros and this takes a long time drawing. So scientists like to use scientific notation. So, so you should really get used to scientific notation. But these all represent the same thing. So again, that's pretty neat. Everything in our known universe is made up these six fundamental units. These six fundamental units make up everything, every variable you can think of, whether it's force or work or current or volume. Every single variable is just made up a combination of these basic units. For example, force is made up of mass, time, and length. Current is made up of charge and time. Volume is just three units of length. Again, there's height, width, and, and length. So let's just focus on force. So what exactly is force? Well, if you've taken a physics class, you know force equals mass times acceleration. So if you have an object with mass that is experiencing an acceleration, you know it must be feeling a force. And all you have to do is take that mass and multiply it by the acceleration and you'll get the force. For example, let's say this rock has a mass of 10 kilograms. And let's say it's experiencing an acceleration of two meters per second squared. If you know the mass of an object and you know the acceleration it's experiencing, you can determine what force it must be feeling. And all you have to do is multiply the mass by the acceleration and you'll get the force that the object must be feeling. 
But what exactly is acceleration? Well, we've learned in a previous video that acceleration is just length over time squared. And again, these are the units that make up this acceleration. Acceleration is in units length over time squared. So now we see what force is. Force is equal to mass times length over time squared. So these are the units that make up force. Just like we explained earlier, we explained how these units make up everything in our universe. So if we're focusing on force, we see force is just made up of these three base units. And this equation represents a real physical phenomenon. For example, if we have in our real world, we have a mass that's experiencing an acceleration, we know it must be feeling a force. So this equation describes something that occurs in our real world. However, there's an issue. Because some countries, when they think of mass, they like to use units gram. And when they think of acceleration, they like to use centimeters as the unit length and seconds as the unit time. While in other countries, when they talk about mass, they like to use the unit of mass slug. And when talking about length, they like to think about feet. And when talking about time, they again like to use second squared. So if different countries use different units for mass and length and time, they're gonna get different units of force. For example, when you use these units, the unit of force you get is in units dyne. And when you use these units, the units of force you get are in units pound. And if you were to actually plug in the actual numbers, so again, let's say we had a real system that was experiencing a force and was accelerating. We could characterize this with this equation. So let's say this object has a mass of 1,000 grams and experiencing this acceleration, then we would say it's experiencing a force of 2 million dynes. However, another country will say no. That mass that even though you call it 10,000 grams, in our units, it's only 0.68 slugs. And in our units of acceleration, it's 6.56. So then if you multiply these, you would get in this country, they would say the force that this object is feeling is 4.49 pounds. But this is confusing. We don't want some countries using 2 million dynes to describe this, while other countries use 4.49 pounds to describe this. This is confusing and, and this isn't consistent. So, so this can lead to problems. So again, the whole world has decided to use these SI units. Whenever we're talking about mass, we use kilograms. So we use kilograms. When talking about length, again, we use units meters. And with time, we use units second. So when you use these SI units, you get units for force in unit newtons. So newton is the SI unit of force. When you use these SI units to get force, that's newtons. So again, so the whole world can be consistent, we all use Newtons when talking about forces. So that's the same with other variables. So again, these are the units that make up force, while these are the fundamental units that make up energy, and these are the fundamental units that make up power. So again, just the way our universe was created, these units give us energy, and these units give us power. However, the whole world, in order to be consistent, we decided to use these SI units. So again, whenever we're talking about mass, the world has decided we'll use kilograms. Whenever we're talking about length, the world has decided we'll use units in meters. And when talking about time, we use units second. So again, these units will give us units of Newton. So Newton is the SI unit of force. And when we're using, again, this equation is a real phenomenon that occurs in our universe. But again, when talking about mass, we use kilograms. When talking about length, we use unit meters and et cetera. So when we use SI units, we get joules. And also when we use SI units, we, we get watts for, for unit of power. So again, the point is, this is a real phenomenon that, that occurs in the universe. You could go to Mars or Jupiter, and they would use these same, the, the, these same laws of physics apply. However, the world has decided to use these units. When talking about mass, we use kilograms. The world has just decided to use these SI units when referring to these phenomena that occur in our universe. So the same thing with electric potential. This is a real phenomena that occurs in our universe. And electric potential is in units mass times length squared over charge times time squared. These fundamental units make up a real 
physical variable that occurs in our universe that we call electric potential. However, the world has decided to be consistent. So when, again, when talking about mass, we use kilograms. When talking about length, we use meters. So when we talk about electric potential using the SI base units, we get units volts. So volts is the SI unit of electric potential. So whenever the world talks about electric potential, we use unit volts, which is again made up of these units. However, if you look in a physics textbook, Sometimes you'll see volts equals kilograms times meter squared over coulombs times second squared. However, in other textbooks, you may see newtons times meter over coulombs equals volts. So which textbook is right? Is the textbook that says this right? Or is the textbook that says this right? Well, remember, what is newtons? Well, what are newtons? Well, we know newtons is just kilograms times meters over second squared. So we know these both represent the same thing. So instead of newtons, we could just replace it with this because we know they represent the same thing. So if we do that, now we get this guy. And if we mathematically reduce this and, and simplify this, we would essentially get this exact same thing. So these both represent the same thing. And also in other textbooks, you see volts equals joules per coulomb. So again, which textbook is right? Well, these both represent the same thing, because what is joules? Well, we learned earlier that joules is equal to these units. So instead of writing joules, we could replace it with these units. And if we do that, we would get this. So if we mathematically simplify this, we would see that this is the exact same thing as this. But the point is, is that the world, when talking about electric potential, we like to use SI units of volts, which again, we know is made of these fundamental variables. So again, you've probably seen volts maybe in a battery, a battery's 12 volts, et cetera, et cetera. What is volt? Well, volts are just made up of these base units. So again, now we can see how these units make up everything in our universe. Those volts in that battery, volt is just made up of kilogram, second squared, meter squared, and coulomb, again in this particular format. So if you look in a physics textbook, you'll see voltage equals current times resistance. This is a very famous equation you'll see in physics textbooks. And this equation represents a real physical phenomena that occurs in our real physical world. For example, if you have a circuit and you know the current going through the circuit and you know the resistance of the circuit, all you have to do is multiply those two values and you can find out the voltage in the circuit. Again, voltage equals current times resistance. This is an equation that represents something that occurs in our real physical world. But again, we already explained what volts is. We, we know volts is in these particular units. So we know voltage is in these particular units. And we know that voltage equals current times resistance. This is an equation we know. So if we know voltage equals current times resistance, we know the unit of current times the unit of resistance must give us these particular units. And, and that's true. If you look at the units of current, it's coulombs over second. If you look in a textbook, the units of resistance, you get these units. And again, we already know voltage equals current times resistance. So therefore current times resistance has to give us units of volts. And again, if you do the math, if you do the math and multiply these, you'll see they equal voltage. So that's good. Physics is consistent. And the same thing with momentum equals mass times velocity. This is another famous equation you'll see in a physics textbook. So again, we know mass is in unit kilograms and we know velocity is in unit meters over second. So if mass times velocity equals momentum, and we know these are the units of mass and velocity, we know momentum must be these units. Because again, these units multiplied we know gives us momentum. And, and we see that's consistent. Kilogram, meter over second, kilogram, meter over second. They're consistent. So physics is consistent. So again, I think that's really quite remarkable. You can think of any variable that occurs in the universe, force, work, magnetic field, viscosity, current, entropy, you can, capacitance, any variable in the world in our universe is just made up of these seven fundamental units. So again, these are the fundamental units in the universe. You could go to anywhere in the universe. You could go to Pluto, wherever. 
the, this, these laws of physics apply. If you have a charge over second, that gives us units of current. If you have mass over charge times second, that gives us units of magnetic field. This is a real physical phenomenon that occurs in our universe that's made up of these variables. So, so these are fundamental units of the universe. But again, on Earth, we've decided to be consistent with the way we refer to these variables. So again, these are the SI base units in, in that, that we like to use. So again, whenever we're talking about current, we like to talk about amps. And amps is just made out of coulombs over second. So again, I recommend just taking a time, a second to, to look over this. So again, this is just the way the universe was created, whether it's God or, or whatever. This, this was in mind when the universe was created. But again, for the world to be consistent, we've decided to use these particular units to describe all these variables that occur in our natural world. And we also have constants in physics that pop up over and over again. For example, the gravitation constant, or this, this Planck's constant, or Faraday's constant. These are real constants that just occur in the, our universe. So they, we, they just pop up over and over again. So again, wh whenever the universe was created, these, these constants were in mind. However, on Earth, we've decided to be consistent and to use these particular SI units to, to describe these these vari these constants. So again, whenever we're talking about Planck's constant, it's made out of these fundamental units. So again, we like to use kilograms, meters squared over second, and etc. So these are some of the constants in our universe. And if you're curious, this is a very comprehensive list of different uh, units and, and variables in, in our